Hi, in this lecture video, we are going to talk about the last software process activity that is software evolution. So what does the software evolution phase do? The flexibility of software system is one of the main reasons why more and more software is being incorporated in large complex systems. Once a decision has been made to manufacture hardware, it is expensive to make changes to the hardware design. However, changes can be made to the software at any time during or after the system development. Even extensive changes are still much, much cheaper than corresponding changes to the system hardware. Historically, there has always been a split between the process of software development and the process of software evolution or maintenance. People think of software development as a creative activity in which a software system is developed from the initial concept through to a working system. However, people also think software maintenance as dull and uninteresting and maybe not the task of an engineer. Although the costs of maintenance are often several times higher than the initial development costs, maintenance processes are sometimes considered to be less challenging than the original software development. This distinction between development and maintenance is increasingly irrelevant. Hardly any software systems are completely new systems, and it makes much more sense to see development and maintenance as a continuum, given the fact that most of the times we try to assess and reuse existing software systems. Rather than two separate processes, it is now more realistic to think of software engineering as an evolutionary process where software is continually changed over its lifetime in response to changing requirements and customer needs. Let's take a look at the diagram depicted on the slide. This figure shows system evolution. If we look at the first phase of system evolution, it talks about defining system requirements. We may get the system requirements from the customer in the form of a system requirement or requirement specification. We may add our own system specification depicting the requirements of the system that is going to be de developed based on customer requirements. Once we have the system requirement in place, we're going to go to the next phase here. Rather than developing a software system from scratch, we're going to assess the existing software systems which provide the similar functionality. So you have a database of existing systems and you're going to assess these systems and see if there exists a software system that closely matches to your requirements. If so, you're going to take, take that up and propose a few changes to that system in order to make that system suitable to your system requirements. And once the proposed changes are in place, you're going to modify the existing system to create a new system. The new system is again added to this database of existing systems because it may be reused when you have further uh, problem statements. Note that once you modify the system and a new system is created, this evolution does not end there. You can always go back to the phase one of defining system requirements and you can add more functionality or modify your system. In this way, most of the software systems today are not developed from, from scratch. Rather, reuse of existing software modules and codes or units are made. In this way, you save a lot of time as a programmer. Integration may be challenging, but if all software development adheres to software development standards, integration should not be as tough. Also, you know that existing systems are already tested, so there is a chance of finding lesser bugs in system module code or unit code. So this is about viewing software engineering as a, an evolutionary system or, or the system evolution, the role of system evolution being predominant where you reuse a lot of software rather than developing an entire system from scratch. Thank you.